Hey, everybody. Well, welcome to Big Blend Radio. Today, Nancy and I are so excited to welcome back multi-instrumentalist and composer Rachel Flowers. And she just released her third solo album, Bigger on the Inside. And you just heard AB, which is the first track on the album, also an available single. Uh, but we're so excited to have her back. She was initially on our show back in summer of 2017 with filmmaker Lorenzo Di Stefano, mm -hmm. uh, talking about uh, the award-winning documentary, Hearing is Believing, which really covers her life um, mm -hmm. and her talent. Uh, just amazing. She's an amazing woman, strong woman, and an mm -hmm. incredible talent, as you can hear. So Bigger on the Inside is out now. And I encourage you to go to her website, rachelflowersmusic.com. You can purchase the album on Bandcamp, Apple Music, and Amazon. Of course, listen on Spotify, but go to Bandcamp. Musicians actually get their money there. I'm just saying. <laughs> Sorry for the little <laughs> rant on that, but welcome, Rachel. Well, how, have you, you. how have you been since 2017? Wow, it's pretty wild. How are you doing? <laughs> it's been good. A lot has changed, hasn't it? <laughs> yep. Crazy. Yeah, I know. I remember the last time we talked to you, just I think got off stage with Dweezil Zappa at some concert somewhere at that point. I remember it was in the documentary, but you were also doing some shows back in New York. Um, that's what I remember from our conversation at that point. So, New Jersey, I think it was New Jersey. New remember. Jersey, New Jersey. Okay, yes, yeah, so. you, you can tell we haven't traveled there yet. Well, actually, we did cross over a bridge and ended up in New Jersey. But we got lost. We got and lost. And ended up in New Jersey. <laughs> it happens all the time. It was too much fun. And I was like, dude, we're in New Jersey. Yeah, that, how'd that cool, happen? A new we're state. In but, you know, <laughs> that's how our tour works. We get lost. But so all this is time. your third solo album. Mm -hmm. A lot of emotion. A lot. Yeah. So it feels like, yeah. And you've got, yeah, I love that you have a little bit of everything. And I think when mm -hmm. we first met you on air, it was like, you know, because of your connection with Keith Emerson and, you know, just all of that, it felt like you were in this prog rock mode. Mm -hmm. But when you listen to this album, mm -hmm. nope, you're a little bit of everything, a lot of jazz. And I know you've always been connected with jazz, but mm -hmm. you have jazz in there, but you got prog rock, you got classical, you got anything you mm -hmm. wanted and you also sing, which is beautiful mm -hmm. to hear. Mm -hmm. So yeah, tell us mm -hmm. about the start of this album. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, in 2019, I went to Cruise to the Edge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I got to hear Adrian Ballou perform. And mm -hmm. after hearing his set, I went to the cabin with my mom and mm -hmm. immediately started singing this idea, which was the start of AB. Oh. Got, back, oh. yeah, got, got back home, got my studio, which is actually right here in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. and uh started recording and uh yeah for that song and then a lot of the other songs some of them started back in like i don't really know hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah okay so these inspirations for songs is it like you heard a bird do a little bit of a melody or somebody said something or what is it that actually triggers like oh that's a song mm. <laughs> a lot of times I would be hearing music in dreams oh wow yeah I'm cool yeah I love having musical dreams where the music sounds very final and then I would wake up get my iPhone out open up the voice memos section using the speech what, mm -hmm. what do they call it? The voiceover accessibility. Mm. And, and um, I would just start record. I would recite the dream, the dialogue, the music. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's like, wow. like watching a movie. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's like making a cake, you know, one ingredient after the other. Yeah. Until you mix it. Mm -hmm. So having everything mm -hmm. on your iPhone, that's got to help a ton where you can just hold it and do what you're hearing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But is it, do you, mm -hmm. I mean, are you able to, do they have Braille on it, on, on the actual iPhones? Uh, or do no. you just kind of know the feeling of your phone? I just know the feeling. I mm -hmm. tried using speed dots for a while mm -hmm. just to be familiar with the mm -hmm. direction in the letters, but then 
I ended up not using it because using my muscle memory and just knowing where each letter is just by the space. Mm. Yeah. yeah, sort of like like playing the playing the fretless bass. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, or the violin now. Yeah, because yeah. that's the other thing is you're multi instrumentalist, and I remember even talking about on the show with you, even understanding what's going on with the keyboard controls. I mean, mm. to understand all of that and to produce mm. what you're producing even you know the music on this album is mm. so big mm. did you get this other people in or you film. yeah that's what nancy this said. is feature film i was like oh i would listen to one of your songs and i'm like oh that's a murder mystery right there that's a murder <laughs> no that's rachel's murder. not killing anybody Hell no, no. <laughs> no, it's, no but it's music like i know that's and then i'm like oh that's sci-fi then you go to the next one i'm like i have a film in my mind for each of your songs Wow. That's yeah. Because it's, it's, you know, music and I'm is like, big. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's epic. It's yeah. epic. Did you have other people collaborate with you or using sampling? Um, a lot of it, the orchestral stuff, a lot of it is sampling using wow. orchestral sound libraries, which are unfortunately not that accessible to the blinds. I, I'm using a really old music oh. program with a pc computer with this program that's like no more i guess it's like cakewalk sonar oh yeah you know i hate it when they put out something good and then one day they go okay bye yeah i hate that <laughs> i hate it yeah it's a bummer yeah it's, it is that's what I've, I've, I've been using that since i was like five years old yeah yeah and then then you think oh well now we have something better and when they say it's better it never is yeah it's it's weird yeah, it is. Yeah. So I have my, I had my friend, Brian Hutchison from Seattle. He, he would used to come down to my house during like the filming, like before and after the filming of hearing, oh, his, mm-hmm. hearing right. his belief. Yeah. And um, a lot of times I would email him. I would say, I would like to check out this orchestral sound library, like a Vienna symphonic mm-hmm. library. And, and I would send him like a, YouTube links of the demos and um, when he would come down he would show me the sounds via like he would tell me okay here's the violins uh, legato that did like a lot of technical music music nerd technical mm-hmm. stuff and I would say like oh, yep that's it that's the sound for this and and then so that way the second I open up, we put them into these huge templates. So then that way I don't have to ask mm. if I'm going to make another template. Like if I want to do, uh, if I want to write a piece that's going to use a gigantic orchestral soundscape, then I just open up the template with all those sounds right there. So then wow. that way I can just get in there and get into film score mode, like James Warner or yeah. John Williams mm. or... George so Martin, cool. Phil Spector. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, because you've got this vibe. It's like, whoa, man, she's getting epic. Mm. This is epic. It's but epic. It's, what's <laughs> great about it is, like I said, this is like an emotional album, Bigger on the Inside. Tell yeah. us about the title of that, because it does, that's what it feels like. It's like, it could be, it could be hot and uh, a little angry. Or like Nancy said right before, she's like, the word is frustration. <laughs> <laughs> you know everybody can feel what they want and then okay. then that's you listen to your voice and it's angelic and it's like okay we're going everywhere on this um <laughs> so yeah I mean thanks yeah tell us about it was this something you thought as a concept I know you're saying you were writing some earlier uh my mom had the title oh. from Dr. Mm-hmm. Dr. Who, I think oh there, oh there we go I love it okay. I love it mm-hmm. good mom there yeah yeah so, and- She's actually the one, um, out of all the songs on the album, the only collaboration on that album was my mom with the lyrics to This Is The Way I Am. Oh, see, that song's ah. powerful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that is, that is, yeah, This Is The Way I Was. I was drawn to that immediately. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody's got to have that song for themselves. Because mm-hmm. I think we yeah. don't want to be ourselves sometimes. We're so wrapped up well, in everything that no, I think we should be allowed to be who we are no and, and I think be. that people feel always or a lot of the times now there's a, 
um, on the defensive. And then you have a small, I'm not gonna say who they are, but you have a small faction of people who are always on the offensive. Mm -hmm. But there's more people on the defensive than the offense mm -hmm. kind of mode in their personalities. And I feel like, you know, sometimes a group of uh, people on the defensive, well, I know, eventually they make a change through voting and doing certain things that switches yeah. it for mm -hmm. a little bit. And then they switch it again and switch it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Switch it up. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you have to because, well, life doesn't change. You know, if you're in that second when you're down, mm -hmm. you have those moments where you're like, what do I care anymore? You know, where? No, you <laughs> where? And then you all of a sudden care. it's like it passes. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> so but this is the way I am. I love that. I love the name of it because I think yeah. we should be proud of who we are. Yeah, absolutely. And this for a serial killer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so then you need to do a James Bond. You could go from Doctor Who to James Bond. Would you write yeah. a James Bond song? Because mm -hmm. I you think should. you've got that. Like you could do yeah, that. It's there. I love listening to those those mystery mystery chords and mystery. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. the the first song on your album sounds like to me. I was like Peter Maybe. Gunn. I don't know if you know who Peter Gunn is. Oh, that's that. a cool piece. Yeah, it's a way cool piece. I'm like, dude, that's Peter Gunn. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's, but that, okay, think about it because that's where bass comes in. Right? Yeah. So playing keyboard, does the bass hit you? Like, mm -hmm. do you, where do you, are you thinking melody when you're writing? Or you just let it flow? I know that you're one of those that flow, it flows through you. You're like natural you know, music lady, but yeah. does the bass come into play for you when you're writing? Mm. Uh, does the bass come into me? Uh, yeah, because on keyboard, sometimes we don't think so much, even though the left hand has got the bass thing going. Like but if you're playing organ, you've got the bass running right on your feet. Like jazz organ. Like yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy Smith, Larry Goldings, mm. Dr. Lonnie Smith, all those greats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Playing, playing bass is fun. Um, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to play the bass. Um, for a while, I was doing bass on the keyboard, and I would listen to bass players and would try to imitate them on yeah. keyboards. But I would, I could tell that there was something that wasn't quite fully there. So then I asked my friend Brian. I said, "Do do do people make short scale basses? Because I'm like, like basses are, I guess, huge or something. I don't know." Well, you're yeah, small. they're heavy. I'm small. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty small. But they're so. heavy. Basses are heavy compared yeah. to guitars. They're heavy. But there's there's also um, on a keyboard, mm -hmm. it's hard. There's a facility where you can bend notes, but not as it's easy. It's not as the you same. Can. You can't like. Yeah, it's just it's, not the same. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's different. It's a different kind of physical feel. Yeah. yeah. It's like so, trying to play the banjo on a keyboard is not the same. Oh, oh that's the yeah. worst. That's yes, the yes. worst. Because yeah. you don't get all the nuances of playing a note off the, of that string and this string. And yeah. yeah. And then they, if you put it on that little repeat thing, it's no. So don't do it. It's weird. <laughs> no, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Beth. I like but to no, play but, deliverance on the banjo. Oh, listen, the, the banjo comes from Africa and it should not always go right to deliverance with the banjo. No, but I'm sorry. it just really. <laughs> Let's stop. Bella Flex, one of my favorite banjo players. To oh, is he not amazing? Yeah. Cool. He's he like, he, he can do Bach, he can do Scarlatti, he can do jazz, yeah. he can do whatever. Exactly. And he and jumps that's... in, he doesn't exactly, he goes at the banjo. I mean, it, he, I loved it because he cool. really brings out that banjo came from Africa. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's really hard to get that to wrap around people's brains at times. But... Yeah, because everybody thinks it comes from Alabama. It, or yeah, somewhere but, there. but it, well, that's where, you know, <laughs> Black people come in on slave boats with banjos and yeah. that's the music. And, mm -hmm. you know, they came in because we brought them here. Um, but, the, this with the whole um banjo banjo is amazing mm -hmm. i mean what i love about him is he didn't go okay i'm only playing bluegrass or mm -hmm. you know appalachian style music you know and right. and and appalachians goes celtic right and it even goes middle eastern in some ways mm -hmm. so yeah. when you think of it 
he really he dives into all kinds of sounds and i think that's what you're doing too mm, thanks the repertoire yeah 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 that's cool okay i i used to listen to film i i i think one of the first film scores that i listened to when i was very little was the titanic score the james mm. horner yeah oh, cool yeah and uh not just the celine dion my heart will go on but the the rest of the score and how that song is used in so many different ways and variations and and just all the mm. different uh the 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 french horn i think that's one of my favorite uses of the french horn is that score mm. that's I, such an odd instrument you know <laughs> i i think it's just so cool because guys the person playing has to put their hand in it mm -hmm. you know and it's Speaking. in it not on it like obviously hands hold instruments or play them yes but they have to put it in there and then breathe on their own hand it's pretty cool <laughs> yeah. you know, the brass instruments are pretty crazy I, I tried once and I was a little like nah I'm just gonna stick with the flute and the keyboards and <laughs> oh did you try to play the trumpet yeah yeah that, oh, the, that sucks you end up spinning <laughs> on yourself really, I was no, thinking, it's, it's I, hard yeah, I was, initially I was thinking, well, it's got three keys. You can play all the notes with three keys. And then I try to sound like, I'm like, no, man. Yeah. No, it's going to be with the flute and the saxophone and the keys. <laughs> so, yeah, what, I mean, the flute, though, the flute is not an easy instrument to master. Yeah, it's it's how it's how the lips navigate with the head joint and how, it, how you have to shape your lips and mm -hmm. place it on the lower lip. And like, you can you can pass out trying to learn the flute. But I, but but it's kind of I like tried harmonica. and I would fall over and pass out because I uh -oh. wasn't doing the breathing right. I couldn't quite mm. get there. Oh and boy! You just you just pass out. You're like, well, that was fun. <laughs> but the flute, you talk about you know holding on your lower lip, but then you mm -hmm. how do you maneuver? But that's the harmonica to me is one of mm. the most coolest instruments. Oh yeah. People can have instant success of learning it so it makes them want to continue to learn music mm -hmm. you know that's why they give it to kids and everything you know but right. but the technicality of it of how you use your hands around it mm -hmm. how you can make echoes and non-echoes and i yeah. mean i think Lato and yeah mm -hmm. it's tits tillman's and stevie wonder are, are my favorite harmonica player howard levy's another mm -hmm. one like playing pretty much anything on the harmonica <laughs> My, my favorite is Johnny Master from Johnny yeah. Master on the Mama's Boys. They're a blues yeah. band now based out of New Orleans. And mm. um, he's kind of got, it's like Muddy Waters and Led Zeppelin and mm. old school really Fleetwood good. Mac wow. got together That's and cool. had, had a baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, it, it's an incredible <laughs> band. I, I wow. encourage you to look him up if you like blues, you know. That's cool. It, mm. They're very, very cool. But his harmonica playing, it's really awesome. does go after muddy waters and it's like he's wow. like, he's intense. like a train he's like a hurricane he's like a yeah. train and then sometimes <laughs> he's just like slow and it's like wow. how you feel getting up in the morning sometimes without coffee mm -hmm. and then it's like yeah now i got some coffee now let's <laughs> go you know it's really good <laughs> stuff you know but, but that's the thing about instruments um so with you singing and playing i mean how you play when you're recording this, are you separating your vocals? Or are you playing all together? I mean, because I know you perform separate. live too. Separate. Um, you separate? Yeah. In the studio, it's different from playing live the, the way that my stuff is set up right now. But uh, mm -hmm. I find it easy to, like if I'm, especially if I'm writing a song in the moment, I'd start with the instrumental parts first. So the piano, the, the keys, guitars, bass drums on the keyboard, orchestration, and then I would do the vocals last a lot of the time. Mm. So, Because hmm. you've got a lot of dynamic in your vocals, a lot mm -hmm. of tenderness, and then, mm -hmm. you know, it's very much like how your playing is. You, you, you're you a master. It was, mm. What are we, a mistress, a madam of, <laughs> what do you call <laughs> a master of dynamics Careful in here. how you play? <laughs> no, no, because you take us on a journey of like, you didn't think that that was gonna happen at the beginning of the song. And then at the end, it is like, it's interesting. You talk about movie scores and I think you write this, like it's epic. You're, it you're, you're going to, you're going to go on a journey, you're going to go on a journey. And mm -hmm. thank you for not doing like, here's two minute songs and everything. I don't know if you could do 
can you write a two minute song? I mean, um, would you? I think if I, a lot of, if I, my favorite types of, my favorite two minute songs are like uh, the Motown hits or like a lot of the jazz, like the jazz stuff that Dinah Washington yeah. do, like, like the entire, the entire form but like really taking time with the lyrics and and um, the orchestration, the like the call response thing, kind of a thing. It was written for mm -hmm. radio, I think, really. You mm -hmm. know, whereas your music is like made obviously for radio too. But listening and back in the day to get a ten minute song, you couldn't do that. Yeah, you couldn't shop that around. You know, unless mm -hmm. you like bribe the dj or something yeah, and said, oh, Listen, wow. air time, air yeah, time's you had expensive. to do something yeah you can you yeah. know it's like mm -hmm. i don't know somebody came up with the rule of the two three minute song and i'm like but that's not what it's supposed to stairway to heaven made it come on yep <laughs> yeah they haven't is like one of the popular mm -hmm. epics in rock music so i know we just you know it's so weird because you know these songs so well and it's overplayed mm -hmm. right and you start to <laughs> get tired of them and on the when we travel, we're on the road so much, oh. and then you're like, play what's on the radio, and here it comes oh, again. Yeah. You Here's know, if you're in Alabama, song. sweet home Alabama, free bird, all of that's coming. Oh, um, don't forget the most played song ever, Hotel California. California. <laughs> uh, you know, it's yeah. real. It's it's really yeah. real. But then if you really just put all that your your frustration of it being overplayed, and you listen. They're all really epic They're songs. We listened They're to Stairway really to Heaven the other like morning, driving through Memphis mm -hmm. of all things, going over the bridge that cracked, going, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this could be our stairway. <laughs> but um, the um, you listened to that song, and it was like, I was like, this was really prog rock at that time, don't you think? In a way, like if you sort of like like the if you really like focus on like the nuance of each verse. Yeah, and like the words and the di like starting off like very laid back, just stripped down, almost Renaissance, and then the band gradually yeah. comes in, and then you get to the like the folk driven section, you get to the full on rocking section with the guitar yeah. solo, and then like the full voice, and then it comes back around, acapella. Yeah, that's kind of you. <laughs> you kind of do cool. that, don't you? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it's I think fun. That we, yeah, it, it's this creating this whole sonic experience with what you're doing and so it's interesting how you bring in the movie thing because i always think sound sounds some of my favorite music is soundtracks because mm -hmm. you're going with something that happened whether you can see the movie or not it's you great. have this yeah. feeling they had to write according to dynamic yep and the script so would yeah. you do that would you write a, a soundtrack for a mm. movie i don't know if there's like um a dial like a like a dialogue or someone describing what's going on on this mm -hmm. at that particular moment yeah it's it's wild stuff <laughs> yeah it's yeah. like we're going into the we're going into the ice the iceberg the, iceberg. the glacier yeah. the iceberg. Like, now we're going down and the band <laughs> the, the iceberg the the band's <laughs> gonna play on <laughs> whatever it is i think it'd be cool to do a space thing like mm -hmm. a sci-fi thing oh well yeah, that'd yeah. be fun. The time is now. <laughs> yeah, because you could do anything you want. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's pretty free because nobody can tell you, no, it shouldn't be like that. Mm. Are you familiar but, with um, the YouTuber named Andrew Huang? No. Mm. No. He's, I think he's, he's a pretty cool, he's like a composer, electronic technology enthusiast, but he mm. does these really cool videos on four producers taking a concept of like a sample or um what there was this really cool one called four producers write score writes a trailer music for a space film oh, cool. space trailer and oh. yeah and it's all these four composers and they're writing it's like the same picture but different music and it's it's so cool oh we we'll have to, to check that, that out. out because they're yeah. all coming in it's like what did you do, yeah, I like that. Cool. The four different yeah. views of that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. The sounds, I should say. Yeah, and what's cool is that they each of the composers, they break down how they wrote the song and what technology they're using and what oh. players they're getting and and uh, stuff like It's really, really neat. Oh. So the, it's a total geek out. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. 
So <laughs> what 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 are you writing music and playing on the most? Uh, what am I? Wise. Yeah. Let's start with keyboard because you play so many different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keyboards is the main one. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. For the pianos and the orchestral stuff and the, the drums. What are you um, doing on the pianos? Because there's piano parts too that, that I always mm -hmm. find the piano, you've got to have the right keyboard to do the piano. Are you playing them on piano pianos? Like, because pianos, they can sound really bad on a keyboard <laughs> if you don't have the right one. And if, if they're not sampled with the nuance of a real piano, Mm. Yeah. Uh, what I love about the keyboards now, like the, the two main ones I'm using for piano stuff, they're both 88 key. One is from Nord and the other is from Korg. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. I use those to do a lot of the piano driven mm. stuff. And uh, it's it's amazing how sampling has really came a long way. It's It's mm. like you're sitting at a piano and... You yeah. forget that you're playing a keyboard. It's like you're actually playing a, a, a Steinway or a, a Yamaha. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. <laughs> but then, okay, do you have the feel though for that? When you're talking about, okay, it can sound that way, but do you, what about the feel? Uh, like, uh, you mean like the action on the keys kind of a thing? Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> that's what to me gets, I want to have that depth, you know? Yeah, what I... I have the Nord Grand and the Korg Grand stage and they're both 88 key. And what I like about the, well, they, they sort of use hammer action okay. keys. Uh, the, the Nord one, they based it off of a kawaii. So the, the, the key action is, it's like you're at a piano. It's really nice light action. So I love mm. light action. So it makes mm. it easier to play yeah. like uh, Hmm. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so are you going to go tour with the, excuse me, tour uh, with the album? I don't really know. I've just been doing stripped down piano versions of a lot of these songs. Mm -hmm. um, I did them at a virtual thing, mm -hmm. virtual prog stock thing last year at the house. And then just, was it at the start of October this year? I did a prog stock in New Jersey. It was all vaccine related, so I was very safe and hmm. um, played. I got to play a lot of these songs stripped down on the on the a nice Fazioli piano in front of an audience again, which was pretty cool. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, and the third night was I I was a lot more relaxed. The third night performing them so. So when, when you're playing in front of an audience, do you feel like the kind of electricity from the audience? Can you tell what they're thinking? Mm, I don't really know sometimes. A lot of times it, mm. it varies on like what I'm hearing. Um, mm -hmm. I just love hearing the sound of an audience. Um, I don't really know. Hmm. As, uh... Yeah, no, I wondered because, I mean, our short band experience was the audience freaked me out. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, you're supposed to be playing the keyboards and I'm still looking, well, how come that person's not like smiling? You know, <laughs> yeah. you know that kind of, like, it kind of freaked me out. So I learned to like not look at them, huh. kind of, because it, it was kind of, you know, it's like trying to focus mm. on your plane versus everything that was going around and the we play actions of the crowd kind of a thing. Yeah. It, you know, and then there was a lot of backstage things going on and noises. Like like, what's going on? Yeah. It was like I found it really hard to focus. I really did, mm -hmm. you know. Uh-huh. It's weird. Yeah. I, I've never really thought much of that a lot of the time. I just Sometimes I can just tell by the energy in the room, mm -hmm. the dialogue, or just from the crowd and the echo of the room, mm -hmm. um, and just hearing. I don't really think too much about it. I just, I'm just happy to be like be in a room full of the crowd, hear, mm -hmm. hearing 
because I, I missed that last year doing virtual shows in my living room. I, I had to have my mom sort of be the needy audience. I'm like, I would finish a song and I would expect to hear the crowd and be like, how are you doing? And it'll be yeah. like, that's, <laughs> that, you know, that, <laughs> I, you're obviously that's why you're performing and I'm not <laughs> I found it really like oh no I want to go back to my little studio in my little with my keyboard all by myself <laughs> whose dog well, is that that, that <clears throat> excuse me I dropped off for a second I had like a coughing fit a little uh -oh. allergy I don't have COVID everybody uh, no. <clears throat> No, there's well, a I'm glad to see you back because the dog's barking now. <laughs> I know. I set the dog off. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Who let the dog <laughs> out? Sorry about that. I just got a tickle in my throat and also I was like, I went down. Sorry uh -oh. about that. No, no. I do not have COVID. I know everyone's gonna think, oh no, you know, I feel like that's the you way we the are COVID. in this world now. Sneeze <laughs> or cough. You're, you know, doomed, but we're not. <laughs> we're not doomed, but sorry about that. But yeah. I was listening to the whole thing that you guys were talking about. And I think mm -hmm. it's really cool what you're doing. And, and I'm so glad this is your third album. <laughs> Me too. So, mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. So everyone, you can get on Bandcamp and go to Rachel Flowers Music. Uh, go there. RachelFlowersMusic.com. We want to close with the darkness. This is I love this cool. piece so yeah. much. Thank you. It's awesome. Just, They're my I'm, favorites as well. So, mm. yeah, it really yeah. I, it just takes you. <clears throat> When you have the title, The Darkness, it, it's like, oh, am I going to be sad and scared? And yet there's that. It's almost like you're just within yourself. I think it goes with the title of the album, Bigger on the Inside, to me. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I love, I love that. When did you write this? I started writing this around like 2016. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was after the the passing of Keith and Greg, like Keith Emerson mm -hmm. and Greg Lake. And it took me a while to get back to writing progressive influenced music because I kind of took, I took a long break from it. And then at some point I'm having this dream where I'm hearing this metal driven song, like a, kind of in a dream theater, porcupine tree kind of a feel. Uh -huh. And then I just start finishing the song later on at the house. And mm. this was another one that, um, was a lot of fun to write like this is the way I am was that started I started writing that back in like 2012 or something like that but um mm -hmm. I would do a lot of redefining and restructuring well not restructuring but rearranging it with the once once I got better sampled sounds it made it easy for me to really get into channeling a live band and then the same with hmm. a lot of the most of the songs that came from this album, it starts, some of the songs I started writing back in 2017. So like Too Much, which came from a dream, which started from a dream after getting into Nine Inch Nails phase, so a lot of dark stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just like fascinated by how expression can be used and words or music or even the production was like distortion mm. and industrial sounds and sound design and the way that Trent Reznor would use mm. sounds and mm. then yeah, and then with um Love Today that sort mm. of that that was a song I heard the entire song in a dream that wow song, yeah and then the second I woke up got the phone out made the voice note with my voice and using playing on one of my Nord keyboards and uh, just reworked a couple sections, wrote the words, and recorded it. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. It's amazing. That's so cool. That's it's amazing cool. how some of you just sit and work on and work on, and then some it's like, huh? bada bing. Boom. Yep. Yeah. You know, but it, <laughs> it's just it's how it it's is. Cool. It's going to do what it wants to do, you know? Yep. And that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, I love all your music. And you. I know I wanted to play one with your voice in there, too. <laughs> you know, oh. so but you know we're going to play darkness because it's so nice. cool but Thanks. um everyone get the album do you are you working on another one yeah i'm in the process of a jazz vocal album and uh sort of a nice. sort of a hip-hop fusion jazz oh, mixture sweet. yeah so i love that nice. you do not limit yourself in what yeah. you're playing you know mm -hmm. i yeah, love that yeah especially after listening to lin-manuel miranda's musical yeah. 
like in the Heights and and mm -hmm. Hamilton especially. Mm -hmm. Just ha just just having a lot of fun trying stuff out, and uh, that's one of the joys of having a home studio and just having a laptop to write the words and uh, voice memos on the phone. And yeah, voice memo, voice yeah. memo helps so much, yep. you know. And, and also, and also watching uh are you familiar with a podcast called song exploder no well, i'll check it out it's a really cool podcast and it's it's my dad introduced me to it a while like back like a, a few years ago or so and um what's cool about it is they'll get artists from pretty much any genre of music they don't do a lot of they don't do a lot of jazz but they do like some rock and hip-hop and some indie and pretty much a whole bunch of stuff and they'll get the artists to break down the song they'll talk about it the writing process the lyrics behind it the history and then they'll play parts of the song in the isolated tracks oh and wow then, yeah <laughs> and then they'll play the song in its entirety and it's just amazing so and it's it's so cool that we're getting to hear a lot of these incredible female artists in all these different genres and as well as male artists as well but it's really cool to just to hear these people and it's like hey i'm not the only person who's written about this and and who's who uses yeah. voice memos this is cool <laughs> yeah you know a lot of the musicians we interview talk about using voice memos a lot because you need to track it down immediate you know yeah. as soon as it comes in you got to get it recorded <clears throat> and we all know writing it on a note of paper is not going to work you, you don't yeah. know if I try to do that and read my own writing it's not happening <laughs> you know but but it's interesting when you bring up mu women in music mm -hmm. right now we have you know women in music it's grown you know oh, yeah. I mean mm -hmm. they've always been there right mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's to actually get them at the, get there at the forefront it's also the same as what's happening with women in film right now mm -hmm. and yeah it's exciting <laughs> it is and so how do you feel about that I mean have you had that where you have to kind of like listen i'm i'm viable as a woman i can i'm a good musician you don't put me aside you know what i mean have you ever had to feel feel that way of hello um, take me more seriously no i never really thought much about it i just i just like to demonstrate it just through recording yeah. yeah but i yeah. just love them the more we can get women out because i think especially in rock oh yeah we're more than backup singers and dancers. Yep. Thank no, you. But nothing wrong with backup singers because they're <laughs> yeah. crucial. Yep, exactly. They are crucial. It's bad. And, and dancers you know. are crucial too. So I'm not, that's mm -hmm. not my <laughs> point. But at one point, that's what we were, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. especially, and, and, in, especially in the progressive rock world, it was mainly like the backup singers, like the Pink Floyd thing, which was cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I was thinking. Yeah, uh, Pink Floyd while. would not same, sound the same without the women singing. Same yeah. as the Rolling Stones, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. And yeah. let's not leave out Tina Turner. You know, no, no. she's the epitome. <laughs> she's the best. She's, she <laughs> is. And she could dance on top of it all. I oh, don't yeah. Care. We have all the dancers oh, yeah. out there now, but Tina Turner worked it, man. She, she worked works it, it man. She yeah. Yeah. Man. yeah. Got that energy in her voice. Yeah, yeah, she does. She's like, she brings it on home. She's got it. Yeah. <laughs> she grasp and control at the same time. That's mm -hmm. so amazing to me mm -hmm. that that's yeah. a, to be able to sing and also play an instrument or sing and dance at the same time. Like, yeah, I don't know. So that's crazy. that's like the epitome of multitasking, you know, yeah, a lot of a lot of concentration and a lot of like a practice practice. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. It, with singing, it's just been a lot of fun, like having taking voice lessons for the since like 2014. Mm. Mm. I started taking voice lessons because for a while I was a little nervous about singing. Mm. I, I would grow up, I would listen to a lot of these incredible powerhouse singers like Aretha and mm. Whitney and Mariah. And mm. strange thing is I, I didn't feel that I was able to relate to those for my own voice. And the funny mm. thing is I found it easy to connect to like the male singers. So like specifically like Marvin Gaye, the Isley brothers, Stevie Wonder, just, Oh. Just lately, I've been getting into Donny Hathaway, um, her daughter mm. Layla Hathaway, who I've mm. been enjoying her stuff, mm. especially in the jazz world. It's just like Esperanza, mm. Gretchen Parlato, mm. and of course, you know the 
those of the past, like Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah oh, Vaughan, yeah, and, yeah. Mm. and Nancy Wilson. Uh, oh, just, yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, what was cool about my voice teacher is that her son is a guitarist, a jazz guitarist. And I got to, I would often play with him because I would do jazz shows in Ventura. And um, he was the one that suggested, because I, I would be singing some Gretchen Parlato or Becca Stevens songs. And he was, and his name is uh, Hans Otzen. And he said, you know, my mom is a voice teacher. If you're interested in taking voice lessons, I was like, that would be pretty cool. So <laughs> cool. taking voice lessons, doing some classical repertoire, some jazz and this and that. And um, mm. yeah, it was just, it's, it's just been a lot of fun ever since. So Well, jazz awesome. is so interesting. <clears throat> it has rules and yet it doesn't, you know, it's like a, it's the ultimate of jam, right? Mm -hmm. Of a jam yeah. session. But the, the, what I find interesting with the jazz guitar is it's got that chop. It's like, it's like it's there. It, it comes in, it'll noodle around and then bring you home right with the drum. And how do they do that? You know what I mean? How do they yeah. synergize that with the drums going off too? But like, there's, I love when jazz has percussion in there, not mm -hmm. just the drums. You have to have that other the conga. Yeah, I want the floaties. Well, the, the thing with jazz is the thing with jazz is you have to know the rules before you break them. Yeah. To break them properly, like so, if you're in prison <laughs> and you're going to break out, you got to know how that lock is on your door in order to break out. You you can't just like keep ramming your head against it or something. You got to know. So you got to mm -hmm. know the rules so you can break them. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a good way to live life. So you, you also know. have to know when to fold them. No, kidding. yeah, <laughs> know when to hold them. Oh, know see, that's why I just know how to fold them. I don't know how to fold them. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Yeah. But. What I love, what I love about this, like I've been going back and listening to a lot of Ella Fitzgerald and Dinah oh. and, and mm. Sarah Vaughan, and mm, I'm learning yeah. a whole lot of a whole lot of different stuff in them. Like Ella Fitzgerald, what I love about her is that she would sing the melody the first mm -hmm. time through in the song. And then with then. some subtle ornaments, but it's all about the melody and the words. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. when it comes to the second chorus, then she can just. Yeah. 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 See, because it, she has to lead you in. She yeah, leads you in. And then it's like, she's now. Like, here it is, babies. Now, now I'm going to mess with it. It's yeah. almost like giving you headspace to soak yeah. in the actual melody while I'm going to do yeah. this. You know what I mean? Yeah. She almost allows us to have a slow brain. <laughs> you know well, I mean? no, because if she has to be sure you're on the same page before mm -hmm. she messes with it. Because if yeah. she messed with it first, she'd lose a lot of people. What yeah. I like is that energy mm -hmm. of going back and forth as well mm -hmm. and watching something just develop impromptu, just that yeah. happening you know just hearing yeah. that boom to boom oh yeah well watch this you know that yeah. well yep. watch this you know <laughs> yeah. that's yep. like, that to me is like the okay, trade-off yeah the trade-off yeah. but yeah. where are we Between going the drummer and and yeah it's mm. like where are we going and it just yeah. starts going and nobody knows really where it's going you're getting yeah. on this train going i got a ticket for nowhere <laughs> but we're going somewhere you know yeah. it's awesome it's going awesome. somewhere that's that's the name of my second album going somewhere no way oh cool i didn't know that no way oh, cool that's so cool i like it i like it so well, we're always going somewhere yeah <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. 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 Go, going somewhere that's my second album and it's got cool. that, that was the start of me really writing vocal tunes oh so, right oh. on going somewhere i like it i mm. like it it's sort, of in the, sort of in the jazz meets R and B kind of a kind of a thing. I like mm -hmm. that though, because <clears throat> they are connected. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then they, it's like jazz mm -hmm. and blues are not the same, but they always put them together. Yep. And it's mm -hmm. like no, <laughs> but they are. You know what it I mean? Very, it it depends on how it's done. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But it's just talking about like how music is labeled. Oh yeah, yeah. the pigeonhole. Yeah. Yeah. Jazz yeah. and blues. There's, I'm like, no. Yeah. There was that, that <laughs> lyric and this is the way I am because it's probably about something different, but still that epic feel you you cannot pigeonhole me. 
Well, and Good. that is across the board when it, especially when it comes to any kind of art, performing arts, painting, whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a landscape artist. Yeah. No, I could also do still life or I could paint wildlife or I can, I can paint a nude or whatever. But mm -hmm. no, if you start out, whatever you start painting that, you, that people start to buy, that is the artist label you're stuck with, mm -hmm. which like, is great. For example, yeah. oh. Frank Zappa comes to my mind. Yeah, yeah. He, he did the rock thing, the satire, the jazz stuff, the classical stuff, the experimental mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> the orchestra. I mean, he was yeah. an orchestrator to me. Yep. No matter what, that was, I think with you, you, ha you have your own sound, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you develop your own sound, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and, yeah. you're, and then you're allowed to change your own sound because it'll still be your own sound. You know, that sounds weird, it's but it's true. true. Yeah. Yeah signature features the little transitions and stuff like mm -hmm. that exactly yeah Fra yes. frank zappa i think was the king of all of that mm -hmm. he was the king of you know cottage industry you think about what we have now for independent artists frank oh, zappa yeah. was there before everybody else yep he was ahead of his time <laughs> mm -hmm. way way ahead of his time and just yeah. to me you know you look at an orchestra i go frank zappa did that with rock and jazz yep and if you screwed yeah. up, he was going to get, excuse me, he was going to get mad at you. <laughs> You've got to oh, get your, he was so like, boom, you got to do this at this time. And you, when you listen to it the first time, you're like, oh, that's really cool. And yet it has that jam vibe. And then you listen to it again. And it's like, man, they, they, it was a jam vibe, but it wasn't a jam. Like this stuff was serious. It's like written, written Even out. Mud Shark, Mud yeah, Shark, yep. you know. <laughs> My sharks is funny when you listen and then watch out where the huskies go. I mean, yep. that that's funny. Watch out yet, for the yellow snow. Yeah, you know, yep. don't you eat that yellow Great googly snow. Moogly. <laughs> Great googly moogly. <laughs> I like that. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> George, you played on that album. You know, I wish I wish he did a Halloween album. Oh, that'd be mm -hmm. cool. Don't you think he would have been the best Halloween? Yeah. Yeah, the deep voice. Yeah, and then the yeah. organ. Well, you you've got some of that crazy Halloweenish organ stuff going on in, in this album. You I do. Know. I'm like, dude. <laughs> yeah, you do. You have some parts of the organ. I'm like, wow, Rachel, what were you feeling at that point? <laughs> yeah, you have a few parts that it's like <laughs> a little sinister. <laughs> and then then just as you think, Rachel, you're like, no, now I'm gonna take you somewhere else. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love what you're doing. I love your music, and yeah. it's so cool to catch up with you. Thank you for joining us. This was fun. This was a lot of fun. Oh my yeah. gosh! Totally, love totally. It. Everyone, again, <laughs> Bandcamp. The album again is called "Bigger on the Inside." It's by Rachel Flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, keep up with her. Go to rachelflowersmusic.com. She's on Bandcamp, Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, all those great places. And now here it is. We're going into the darkness. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> darkness by Rachel Flowers. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Good You're to welcome. see you again. Yeah, it's you awesome. too.
rushing me today But with the darkness interfering me I am hearing things That's making me feel lots of fear I'm running faster as I leave this place Always on a race With only one real goal in mind The rumble of these massive thunder clouds Coming all around But now I think of what I just found Now the sun is always shining in its place No more darkness or destruction out in space For a while I've been searching for This always comes back again Some speak of problems never solved And you'll wonder where they'll go Some people speak their minds Just thinking what they know Shining in its place No more darkness or destruction out in space For a while I've been searching for this place Speaking of winds of change, the world is turning with winds of change. The world is speaking of 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 winds of change. The world is speaking of